For decades, the roster of classic pizza toppings has remained the same. There's pepperoni, sausage and peppers, olives, anchovies, and for some people, pineapple. But in recent years, one topping has quickly made itself a mainstay at pizza shops across the country, hot honey. Mike's Hot Honey is unique because of the kick that you get on the back of your palate. I really had no idea that this would become a business eventually. I just was a fan of the combination of honey and chili peppers on pizza and was excited to share it with my friends. Once bottles got out into the world and people started tasting it, I very quickly realized that I did have a viable business on my hands. After being introduced to customers in 2010, Mike's Hot Honey quickly found an opening in the $2.5 billion U.S. honey market. The product is currently sold in 30,000 retail and food service locations across the country, and the company is on track to bring in more than $40 million in 2023. We think the key of building a brand that's going to stand the test of time is to build it around a strong core product, and we've done that. I think it's really rare for a business of this size to just sell one thing. This is the story of how one man turned his hobby of making hot honey into a $40 million a year company. Even in college, Mike aspired to work in the condiment industry. I had a chance run in with Larry Raymond from Sweet Baby Ray's and it really inspired me and I thought it'd be great to be a condiment man. And I thought, you know what, this might be the life for me. While studying Portuguese in Brazil in the fall of 2003, inspiration struck. I was hiking with some friends and on the last day of our hike, we descended into a little valley and found a pizzeria there. And there were jars of honey with chili peppers on the tables for drizzling on the pizza. The first time I tasted the combination of honey and chili peppers on pizza, it blew my mind. I just couldn't shake the memory of it and kept on thinking about it. It was something that I realized I wanted to try to make for myself and maybe share with friends and family. Over the next six years, just for fun, Mike tested new ways of infusing the three ingredients, honey, chili peppers, and vinegar. He jarred hot honey at home and gifted it to his friends and family. He moved to New York and started a job in the music business. But in his spare time, he worked to perfect the hot honey recipe. Dialing in the flavor profile of the product was a long process. It required a lot of chili pepper consumption, which was quite painful at times. I used to go to the Bronx Terminal Market and taste different varietals of chili pepper, and I'd bring a carton of whole milk with me to sip on in between tastes, which was a recipe for a stomach ache. Then, in early 2010, while browsing the pizza blog Slice, Mike noticed a handle that kept popping up, Polly G. So I was thinking to myself, who is this Polly G guy? And eventually, Slice Blog profiled Polly, and they said that he was going to be opening his own pizzeria in Greenpoint, Brooklyn. So when he first opened the pizzeria, I went there to try it and met him. I started peppering him with questions about his process for making dough and how the oven worked. And by the end of the conversation, he could tell that I was really into making pizza and he asked if I would be interested in coming in as a pizza apprentice. Early on in his apprenticeship, Mike brought Polly the honey he had been working on for years. And brought it in for Polly to try. He tasted it. He started drizzling it on a hot soprasata pizza, which we later called the Hellboy, and asked me if I could make it for the restaurant to drizzle on the pizzas. Soon, customers were asking to purchase bottles of Mike's Hot Honey. At this time, I was making Mike's Hot Honey in small batches, one gallon at a time, in the back of the pizzeria. I was using the restaurant for production on Mondays when they were closed. So I'd go there on Monday and spend a full day in the kitchen just making batches of Mike's Hot Honey and bottling. I started selling bottles off the bar in November of 2010, and shortly thereafter, I was lucky to have some press. It was something that people really loved to drizzle on their pizza, but they also loved to share it with their friends. So I just wanted to get the product out into the world, and I was selling it at virtually no margin. So I was selling it for $6 a bottle. Very quickly, I raised the price, realizing that was not sustainable at all. Pretty soon, I had orders coming in from other restaurants, from specialty retailers around the city and beyond. As his business grew, Mike began driving around New York City delivering bottles of honey out of his car. 
Then, in 2014, a buyer from Whole Foods said that they wanted to bring Mike's product into their store. At that time, there had been very little innovation in the honey aisle. It had been pretty much the same for 50 years. We brought something new to the honey aisle, which hadn't seen anything exciting in quite a long time. In late 2014, Mike reconnected with his college friend, Matt Beaton, who had just moved to the East Coast. Mike had something really special uh, with his hot honey. And so I reached out to him and told him if he ever needed help as a friend, I'd be happy to help him write a business plan, set up QuickBooks, all those things you do in the early years of the company. So I think we both just realized that we would have a lot of fun if we gave this a go. His skill set really complemented mine, and I thought he was a great fit to help me build the business. Matt became the company's CEO, and the pair quickly realized that they needed outside investment to scale their business. It was in 2017 when we started to get some interest from some big customers that were required us to carry a bit more inventory to be able to service them on time and in full. And to, to have that inventory, we needed capital. And so it was about that time that we started looking for investors. And most good things don't come easily, and, and raising money is not for the faint of heart. We heard no hundreds of times, which can be discouraging because you know you have something really special. Eventually, those no's turned into yeses. Since 2017, Matt and Mike have been able to raise around $12 million through three rounds of funding. Mike's Hot Honey not only expanded with financial partners, but also with brand collaborations. We recently launched a potato chip with Utz, a mustard with Mai, the French Dijon company, and a frozen pizza with California Pizza Kitchen. For brand awareness, the company has provided neon signs of its logo for restaurant partners to hang in store. Mike and Matt carefully select which restaurants and shops they choose to supply signs with. Partial to tastemakers, they want the customers to see the neon signs as badges that the stores wear with pride. We realized that our food service customers made up the biggest drivers of brand awareness for the brand. They see the brand in the restaurant from that signage and then remember us on shelf at retail when they're walking through the honey aisle. It's a marker of quality. This is very similar to the same strategy that lots of beer brands use in bars. There are roughly 50 neon signs scattered around the country at key restaurant partners and we've got quite a long wait list of people who are waiting to have a sign installed at their shop. As sales have grown, so has the size of the Mike's Hot Honey team. Once we were able to secure capital, we were able to start to build a team around us. Our, our sales team has done a terrific job to make Mike's Hot Honey broadly available across the country. Across retail, across restaurants, you can find us in approximately 30,000 locations. On Amazon, Mike's Hot Honey is the number one selling hot sauce at any given time. On our product, there's less than 1% household penetration right now, so we have a lot of consumers in this country that we still need to reach. The company sells Mike's Hot Honey in squeeze packs and dip cups, one and a half ounce mini jars, 12 ounce squeeze bottles, 24 ounce chef's bottles, and one gallon jugs. In July of 2020, 10 years after Mike started selling his hot honey, the company released another product, an extra hot version of the hot honey. There's a lot of temptation to grow brands through flavor innovation and new flavor profiles. But what we realized is that Mike's Hot Honey was a very novel product that many people had never tasted. And we realized that there was a lot of room for growth just on that core product. So instead of extending into other flavor profiles, we grew the brand by price and pack innovation. And we made it available in as many different pack sizes for as many different usage occasions as possible. That doesn't mean though that in the future there won't be other things under our brand Halo that come to market. But for now, our focus continues to be on that core product because we know the ceiling is still really high. We created a category it's used on everything from pizza, to fried chicken, to cocktails, to charcuterie and cheese boards, to salads, barbecue. Uh, you can brush your teeth with it. <laughs> There's virtually nothing that it can't, it can't go on.